on Calculation Beyond Politics and Beyond the Big Two. Welcome, Silverliners, to the wonderful world of Wednesday Wham. I'm your host, Dean Zachary. I am joined tonight by a good classic core crew, minus one, I should say, Barbara Kalberg, the Empress of Inks. We have Rob Davis, the Paragon of Pencils. We have one of the Wizards of Wordplay, Rory Boyle, whose compatriot is MIA. We will scold him accordingly when he returns. <laughs> and the return, the long-awaited <laughs> return of Aaron the Contrarian Humphreys, sometimes known as the Spear Skeptic. Welcome back, Aaron. Good to have you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hopefully, hopefully I'll make this more of a regular thing. Uh, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah with my new job schedule. I don't think Tuesday's going to work, but Wednesday works. Awesome. So. Awesome. Good thing. Yeah. Uh, we are continuing our discussion tonight uh, about comic art styles. We've covered it in two previous broadcasts, and uh, this is part three by popular demand. We, uh, we made it all the way through the various ages of comic art styles, and we started with the Golden Age from uh, 1938 to 1956, and followed by the Silver Age, 1956 to some say around 1973, and then, of course, uh, the Bronze Age, 73 to about 87. And then from 87 till the modern uh, era is what it's called now, 87 to the present day. Um, those are the broad categories that some comic scholars have them set up on the Internet. So I wanted to keep it as brief as possible discussing those time periods. But um, what we're going to do is just start out with the 2000s and bring ourselves up to... Uh, 2022 and talk about how the styles evolved um, as we had said before uh, the golden age uh, was more uh, iconic cartoons with broader subjects of you know good guys bad guys and they wear uh, strong men underwear and they fight and you know that's that's about it you know with varying degrees of, of complexity um, and then the Silver Age got a little bit more interesting uh, than moving forward to, you know, near the end of the Silver Age, we get Spider-Man, you know, and the superheroes with emotional issues and problems begin to be more apparent. And then, of course, we enter into the Bronze Age where it's just really about social issues more so and some horror uh, and uh, mm -hmm. fantasy stuff starts to <clears throat> rise then. And now uh, after the modern era, which uh, arguably with uh, the Dark Knight Returns and Watchmen and so on, we get into some really deeper, darker, more adult themes of, you know, what does it even mean to be a superhero? Is that even a good thing from the perspective of uh, the rest of us? And how does it affect society? Blah, blah, blah. Um, so that brings us to um, the 90s, which some argue was characterized more by guns and well-endowed ladies with uh, lots of claws and pouches, um, <laughs> which who can argue with that? Um, it just, it was a very odd time, but you know, that's the time I really got into doing comics. The nineties so were an odd time. Yeah. The no, they, they were, it was almost kind of like, <clears throat> like the teenagers got a hold of comics and like really yeah. let's just like all the high business. school yeah like all the high school drawings you made as friends with guys with guns and blowing stuff up and now we yeah. get to go do this and yeah i i inked as fast as i could all during the 90s i did a, a minimum two issues a month and i just you were just trying I, to get the 90s over with as fast as possible <laughs> it, the 90s were very very good to me <laughs> yeah. I was like too. the one thing that didn't trans translate in the '90s for comics is the comics didn't have the same terrible color scheme we had in the '90s with like turquoise and yellow and uh. purple jackets. You know, <laughs> like that wasn't in the comics. <laughs> I know it. It was funny because they actually had okay coloring, like in the '80s. You look at the yeah. '80s, and then yeah. the coloring in the '90s got so garish Black. and bright and mismatched and it was the introduction of the computer coloring mm. which it i'm like should have really, made it better but it was you worse. make it you would think right. like you have yeah. Yeah. all the colors of the gamut now and you pick all the wrong one <laughs> it was, <laughs> was kind of like okay <laughs> so, a lot of it was trial and error with a yeah. lot of error like mm -hmm. i wonder what this will look like in print oh you know yeah. yeah before we get too much deeper into this i want to i want to say we've got a we've got a handful of silver liners down in florida that we want yes. to make yes. we would like to uh 
have them stay safe today yes. and anybody else who oh, yeah. usually listens in that might not be getting this today because they're they don't have any power uh stay safe down there and yes. everybody be careful yep you guys be careful yep. and any silver liners down there who want to do a check-in to tell mm -hmm. us you're okay tommy especially you you're famous for checking in with us please feel free to do so we'd love to hear from you roland john Maybe jose Brent. Yeah. yeah. Brent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We yeah. got a, 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 about half. Yeah. Haley. We got at least half a dozen of our silver liners down there in the, yep. in the path right. of the storm. We're thinking about you. So on. check in with us and uh, let us know how things are going. You know, give us updates as you can. Hopefully uh, we all get through this together. We're with you. Um, so let's continue, Barb, as our yeah. visual producer here, as far as screen sharing goes. Um, let's, let's start with uh, something interesting from the two thousands and we're going to start into the aughts here, which to me was just throw everything against the wall and see what sticks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that really yeah. Was kind of an interesting. That time. was kind of, wasn't that kind of the, um, crash was a crash at the comics in the early two thousands. Yeah. Like it was night, what, late was 90s, that? late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was like a drastic crash. That was it the, was, that was, it was. The, uh, huge crash. Death of the mm -hmm. spectator market. Right. Yeah. I, I lasted That's... until 2000 and then I had to actually go out and make money uh, elsewhere besides comics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I got yeah. pushed out a little earlier than you did, but yeah. Or actually that's just the bottom fell out. I, I, yeah, and, it really did. And I all yeah. scrambling to do other things. <laughs> and as mm -hmm. Barb noted, most of us had to go get, you know, real quote unquote day jobs and, and you know, for, jobs. you know, for a uh, steady income and insurance and benefits and all that, yeah. because, you and know, pensions so you can get to where I am and yeah. do this again. For get fun. to where you That's and right. Barb are. That's where <laughs> we I am live too. Uh, for you. <laughs> uh, Now here we go with, uh, this looks, this looks really cool. Um, tell us a little bit about who this is, Barb. You can read it. Better yep. than I can. This is a, a 2000, uh, cover mm -hmm. from Mike Diodato. Okay. Okay. Is that how yeah. you pronounce his name? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that is, is a, I would say, comic surrealism, again, based in realism mm -hmm. with a heightened comic flair. Um, we're still, you know, interesting silhouette use of just a silhouette there. White and space. It definitely uh, focuses in on her yeah. because she's the only thing on there against all that stark white. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, How did she power. get her hair to do that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Electrically. Um, oh, oh, pencil. Uh, yeah. Oh, pencil. Uh -huh. Could uh, that shoe, if you flipped her shoe like right way around, would that actually that wouldn't actually work, would it? Well, you mean to no. stand as a high heel? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know if she could actually walk in those. Um, that's really interesting. Uh, well, you're seeing a little bit of holdover from the '90s, obviously, with a little bit of the cheesecake feel. Mm -hmm. um thin waist yeah cheesecake um, love that word yeah the words uh I, you know i can read the type i don't really know what the book is about obviously though this may not be it's not a number one is it barb it's like a number it's three. a number three okay. it's from image okay it's called jade warriors okay so it doesn't really tell us a whole lot not big on storytelling here this could even be mm -hmm. an interior a uh, panel of some sort. So the uh, yeah, I, you know, A plus for rendering. Uh, Diodato is an excellent artist, but conceptually, I'm not really sure what to take away from the cover. Barb, what about you? What do you What do you think? Does this thing communicate anything to you? Uh, story wise, no. Uh, it's eye catching simply because it's very stark in its simplicity. Yeah. Um, and obviously, he's going for, you know. The, the cheesecake, which yeah. is and 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 the name Mike Diodato is going to instantly create right. uh, a, a fanboy response. So sure, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, yeah. What I'd, I'd be interested in Rob's take. Yeah, Rob, what about your take, my friend? Um, I like Mike Diodato's work. He has he has a range of styles that he can do. And this is his more, this is his early, more imagey, you know, the, the, the very thin waists and the, and the mm -hmm. unrealistic anatomy. Well, he's, his image. he's very, he's very, yeah, he's very malleable in, in his, in his style, but he, he usually has really good storytelling. 
So I don't, you know, I don't know. Uh, but since this is like a third issue, he's really just what, the the fans that know this probably already uh, already know what this is about. Yeah, this is just uh, and, and so it's the cheesecake to bring in everybody else. Yeah, but I agree. It, you know, it, but the, the starkness of it, it, I like the design of it. It just doesn't tell you what the book is about. But I, yep. I like I like his styles. That, the different styles of the uses and all that 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 motion in the hair is just really interesting. I think. Yeah. What about uh, you, Aaron? Any any commentary? Uh, Does your familiar have anything to say? <laughs> this is my familiar, <laughs> the cat Bailey. Do you have anything to say about it? <laughs> um, right now, it doesn't. I, the windows. I, I, I I'm as as dumb as this. Like I think for placement, the window. I think needs to be pushed away from the text up there, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it looks like Pete the Spirit mm-hmm. items put on a page. Like mm-hmm. you have a window, mm-hmm. and then you have her, and then you have some object in front of her knees, which looks like a piece of paper. Yep, it looks like a well, it's just a piece of paper with Mike's signature. Oh, okay, ah. getting that to his signature. Um, I beyond that, I mean, you know, yeah, it I doesn't say she's much. In prison, does it? some somehow. I, I mean, yeah. I, I, I assume that's and, yeah. You got a little bondage, that, some bars, yeah, some yeah. DNA. You know, yeah, yep. It's pure fan service. Yeah, yep. absolutely, absolutely. Yep. Rory, before we move on, any any final comments? Yeah, the um, I like the, the minimalist white background. I mm-hmm. always think that's classy looking because it makes everything else stand out. Yes. The problems are so few things to look at. And your yep. eyeball only follows one pattern, like an S turn from Jade Warrior to the window to her to the note. Yeah. So you're, you're forced within this box. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you land more on her. And the more you look at it, the more outlandish it is. Yeah. Yeah. So up front, it's like, oh, wow, this is really interesting. And the yeah. more you look at it, you're like, eh. Yeah, it just doesn't it, – it, it doesn't tell us a whole lot. But again, as, as we've said, you know, fan service for mm-hmm. the casual – Comic fan would would pick it up for for the fan service elements, and then the uh, the loyal fan to either Diodato or the title would pick it up just because they're already there. They already know what the story is. So, all right, uh, next one is I know is uh, one of your favorites, Dean. Yes, ah, uh, yes, two thousand and two. Oh yeah, this, uh, this was this? the relaunch. Uh, is this the cover to the? It looks like maybe the collection. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. Obviously, uh, this is Jim Lee for anybody who is yeah. questioning that. Absolutely. Yeah. Jim Lee um, really made a name for himself uh, starting in the late 80s uh, on Uncanny X-Men, which he gained a tremendous following. He created my favorite comic book of all time, uh, Uncanny X-Men number 271, mm-hmm. which is from 1990. Um, and, uh, which just as a side note, uh, I, I mentioned this to, uh, Barb off camera one day, uh, one of the pages, page four from X, Uncanny X-Men number 274 recently sold at auction for $360,000. That okay. is just a black and white piece of art. So what were, they, what were they fighting in that issue? What was that issue? That I've... was the magistrates. Uh, they're finding the magistrates down in Genosha. Cameron Hodge was the leader, and of course, uh... they were. It was part of the extinction agenda, and they were trying to take them out. And it was particularly it was uh, Wolverine with Jubilee as his sidekick, and I, think um, I remember that one. Psylocke as well, and we also this leads it goes through a stink, extinction agenda, and then leads into the story where. Professor Xavier returns from the Shi'ar Empire, married to the Shi'ar Emperor, Empress Lilandra. Lilandra. Yes, I so was in, I was impressed to see when one of my pages uh, sold at auction, some auction online, where for like thirty five hundred. I can't even imagine. Awesome. Three hundred and eighty thousand. Three sixty. Three hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, that's uh, that's Mm. pretty amazing. At any rate, Jim uh, is ubiquitous. He's everywhere. We know him. We've all seen his Uh. work. What what he what he's known for, in my opinion, was taking that surrealism of, say, Neil Adams and or John Byrne and elevating it with this electrified line work that really gave us action with line 
which made me fall in love with the medium itself. And I became sort of a student of his work and still learn from it today. Uh, follow all of it. I try to get all of the black and white versions, whether it's pencils or inks in reprints and so on, just to study how he solves problems because he's a hatching guy and I'm a hatching guy. Yeah. yeah big fan. So I can't really be too objective. I've always loved his design, his layout. I like his Magneto helmet that everyone seems to love and carry through even till today. Um, you know, and he's even doing my favorite costume for Wolvie there. So mm -hmm. we'll say so the, right got, the brown one was my favorite one too. Yeah. 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 You've got the uh, team, um, mm -hmm. the team with a mashup of the big head, mm -hmm. big head layout with a team mashup. So yeah, two of the two different components here of our favorite covers, a mm -hmm. team cover and a big head cover. And the, the floating head. The thing is, is I'm trying to think, was this a cover? And just because, like, wouldn't the logo just cover up Magneto's head? Yeah, it this might have been, been a poster. poster. This might have been a poster. I, I yeah. don't know. I, just, yeah. I saw it online, and I it loved it. It looks really familiar. It. I, You know, I, honestly, I almost think, was this from his trading cards? I don't think so. It's a, po it's a poster, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, I had it. It's I got had too it many mind. details to be a uh, to be a, a cover. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Or, wait, or, yeah. wait. Alert! We got storm alert. We got storm alert. Let's mm. see. Tommy, welcome, my friend. How are y'all doing? How are you? Wait. Out? Everything is uh rainy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Still Everything is over. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean it's. I mean it's not even very here in Orlando. It's not wind. It's a, every now and again you'll get a, a gust, but right now it's just kind of, kind of, just raining. I mean it's not. Yeah, you guys are really supposed gone. to get get nailed about uh, eight or nine tonight, I think, is uh, local yeah. time. So. Yeah, but they, they could, once it gets this far, it's supposed to even drop down to like a one or just a tropical storm right. when it gets so this far. So it should be as bad. Yeah, I hope so. I, bad, I'm hoping so. We'll find out. But I don't know. Here you go. Here you go. We can look out in the. Let's look out. You see. It's it's real dark, but. Uh, yeah, I know. There you can see shit. I, I meant stuff. <laughs> stuff. See stuff. See God stuff. Like Sorry, number. Though. We're good. We're good. <laughs> I'm glad you're doing okay, man. Just wanted. To yeah. Know. In with the Florida peeps, uh, that's far. Uh, yeah, styles, and uh, we we're just talking about Jim Lee, and and Barb. Barb was about to tell us what she liked about the the poster we're looking at. Barb, what what do you like about his work? Uh, I I think Jim, uh, as far as the '90s style goes, he was my favorite of of the mm -hmm. image type of look. He. He knew the basics of art before right. he before he went into the style, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's important to me is that uh, no real art before you stylize it mm -hmm. or, yeah. or caricature. Before you it. can break the rules, you need to know the rules. Know the rules exactly. It's a good call. You can't fully appreciate it unless you know the rules. Yeah. Right. That's right. Also, he he also was a master of underlining. Yeah, very good which, call. Which I always liked. Uh, this particular is that wind I'm hearing. There? It is wind. Yeah, I probably think it's probably should get off. <laughs> but I, I just wanted to say I uh, I love you guys. I'll let you know how it's going. Love you right, too, Tom. Take care. Stay yourself, safe, brother. Hey, Tommy. Matt and down the uh, hatches, man. Bye bye. We'll see you soon. Oh, I know. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Well, Tommy's always entertaining. Man. I'm just glad he's okay. Uh, BJ, BJ just uh, messaged me and said she lost, lost electricity. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll keep. All right. Um, I'm keeping an eye anyway. on him with messaging too, so we we can report that as as it comes in. You were saying that you got to know the rules before you break them. You got to know the real anatomy yep. before you can successfully exaggerate it. Uh, That's it helps. right. And Jim, Jim knows his rules. Yes. Uh, the does. rules of yeah. art. Yep. So yep. I, I, I've always liked his work. And then this is the, uh, the Rob Davis rules of warm background, cool foreground here. Oh yeah. Which <laughs> I, I like to break. Yeah. You've got an effect now, Rob. You, you've made it. You, you have an effect. The warm background, cool. At work. least here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any commentary, Rob, beyond what, what 
you said earlier? I, I am not not a big fan of all the scratchy. Uh, yeah, I got I got to blow hatching. myself so I can see it a little better. All that hatching and and stuff. Uh-huh. I've never been a real big fan of that because to me it obscures rather than than helps. Okay. But uh, it works over Jim Lee's stuff because uh, he's because there's actual form underneath. Yes. And it kind of and it and it actually helps the it actually works with the form. Whereas with like Rob Liefeld stuff, there's not there's no real uh, anatomy there at all. It's yeah. just it, it just stuff stuck together. Whereas Jim's stuff is has got there's some form underneath it. There's some he knows what he's what he's doing. And uh, but mm-hmm. but all that that hatching uh, is just that's too much for me. No, there, I get. There's some is okay, but uh, that's. During this time period, they did it way too much. I, I think it's eased off since then, which I I much appreciate. I didn't. I wasn't reading very many comics at this point. I was I was concentrating on my uh, real life career at that time, mm-hmm. so I wasn't studying this stuff. And I, I would just see this, and I would go, "Well, okay, if that's what they want to do, <laughs> <laughs> you know." Yeah. And, and, but of of the people that were doing it during that time period, Jim Lee at, at least had some. Uh, some real uh, storytelling ability <clears throat> and and knew how to draw a cool uh, a cool scene so oh, yeah absolutely I, I, it, I like it it's not it, this isn't my favorite period of comics but uh, this is th- this is one of the better examples from that time period yeah uh, what about you Aaron comments beyond what's again I I always liked Jim Lee when he first started that one of my mm-hmm. things with some of the image guys mark silverstrew is this way too they they draw the same thing so much that they stiffen up yeah 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 and and this is kind of going into jim's a little more where he's a little more like the root pose you know he has like the basic pose uh but like when he first started it, there was a lot of more solid blacks they didn't have the hatching and mm-hmm. i think it was more three-dimensional mm-hmm. i actually think the hatching flattens his work here yes instead of, yep. and the only reason i say that is because a lot of the hatching lines are not following the contours of the shapes yes mm-hmm. like if you look at the thigh of wolverine those lines instead of bending around the shape to heighten it are just mm-hmm. straight and i think yep. that flattens a lot of his stuff yeah so it could have just been speed or the look, but I think if you're going to hatch, it should be to accentuate the three dimensional shape. Or to do yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So. Um, what about um, Rory? Any comments on Jim Lee's work? This is probably one of my favorite uh, ones so far. I'm I'm actually a fan of the hatching. I like what it does. Yeah. Uh, awesome cover, and. I think Cyclops is just wearing briefs and body paint. <laughs> yeah. If you had a shirt that tight yeah. to see yeah, every yeah. one of those obliques. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen an actual Lycra uh, costume that shows right. every single muscle in a person's body. I'm, but you I'm, I'm going to get some Under Armour and airbrush it. With abs. <laughs> airbrush it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Ready? Ready. Yeah. Let's move on. Yes. Oh, yeah. David That's... Lloyd. This is 2005. Okay. V for uh, Vendetta. This is, I love this cover just because yeah, yeah. it's not only do, is it so recognizable? I mean, who doesn't recognize the the Guy Fox face, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah. And it's, I don't know, the, the, the red and the green just really make it pop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of strong graphic covers as well, and this qualifies as a you know close up face cover that works. Um, you, you still get dimension; um, it fills the page, but because of the rendering and the coloring, you still get dimension. You still get expression where the mask itself could have ended up being static but it seems alive um, and definitely he is communicating the expression that that mask uh, is there to convey. Um, and the layout is beautiful. Even the brim uh, yeah. going under that V mm-hmm. is beautiful. It brings your eye right in and then right to the eye and then mm-hmm. down to the face and then out with vertigo. 
Um, yeah, beautifully done. Aaron, thoughts, comments? It, you know, it's funny. I, I never got, I mean, I, I saw the movie. I never got, I, I am probably the only man on the planet comic fan that just never got Alan Moore. I just never got what the big deal about him was. So I never mm. read a lot of, I mean, I've read Watchmen and I've read a few. Sure. I just think he's incredibly boring. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know. I just, I just, it's just like, he, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure I lost a ton of fans, you know, I just never, same thing with Neil Gaiman. I just right. never, he never clicked with me. And I tried, I've read Stardust and a few of his books. He's never did it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's weird that he has that bright color on the bottom lip. Okay. I think I'll it's, just, it's, yeah, I like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's interesting. It's kind of a focal point. I almost feel like he should put a little on the nose, but mm -hmm. I think it works. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think it works. I mean, I know generally what the story is about. Sure. Um, but again, it's kind of like, yeah, I mean, I don't have much more to say about it. I mean, yeah, but yeah. it's a recognizable know. face for you, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very, you see it everywhere. Yeah, yeah, the guy, the guy Fox. I mean, mm -hmm. if anything, you think of what that hacker group that uses that that anonymous. Right. Yeah. anonymous. yeah, the anonymous. Yeah. yeah, Rob, what about you, my friend? What's uh, what are your thoughts on this? Cover? Well, this kind of this harkens back to that Mike Diodato one again. You do, without knowing what the story is, does this tell you what the story's about? If you don't know who Guy Fox is, no, it's not right. going to tell you anything. No. But if right. you, you know the Guy history. Fox mask, you got to have some. You got to have some knowledge about what that's all about. Be, context to get this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. there has to, the context. But unfortunately, most people do, and most people did at this time because it was such a hot comic at the time. I, now, I, I never read it. I haven't watched the movie either. So oh, I, I but but I have seen artwork from it. This mm. is one of the most gorgeous comic books ever mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful book. Mm -hmm. And one okay. of these days I need to get the collection and sit down and just devour it and enjoy it. But uh, mm -hmm. but all I've seen is little bits and pieces of it. But that's a very, very powerful cover. Yeah. And it's almost monochrome, but that little mm -hmm. touch of red there on the lips mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. a little bit on the cheeks really sets it all off That it, because... You've got you've got red and you've got green, which are complementary colors, and they they make the, when you put them next to each other they vibrate. Yeah, so, and so that's what's going on here. Is it's just a beautiful piece of work. Yeah, really I'll, grab if that's sitting on a on a comic book stand. That's going to grab you. Yeah, you're at least going to walk up to it and wonder about it. What Maybe the heck is that? Yeah. Back, you know, and say, I wonder what this is about. <clears throat> Rory, what about you, my friend? Comments? Uh, classic, love it. One of my all-time faves. And oh, yeah. the simplicity of it and the history of it. If you know the history of the contact, it just it hits you all the more. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know there was green in this cover until it was Barb that brought up the green. Because I'm colorblind. So what I see oh, is wow, really? brownish in the hat. Uh, oh, I didn't really see the green tint on the face. I saw more just like a, a muted white gray. Mm -hmm. And the bottom lip looks more like purple to me. Mm-hmm. And, and it still, but it still works, right? Still works, yeah. It still works, and like pink yeah. circles in the cheeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it all still works. Yeah, solid. Right, we, but now I see like a pale green. Oh, cool. Well, good. All right, we are going to go from one face mm -hmm. to another. Yeah. <laughs> and this is just a two color. Again, this is a two color cover: red mm -hmm. and black. Mm -hmm. With a uh, with some negative space in there. This is uh, 2011. This is by Jock. Mm -hmm. I've heard of that name. Yeah, he's a UK artist. Uh, that's his uh, nom de plume, his pen name. Uh, mm -hmm. I got to look up who he, who he is, but he's known for this sort of Bill Sienkiewicz, almost uh, esoteric mm -hmm. expressionism. Mm -hmm. uh, it's. Um, it's interesting. It's powerful. Uh, Joker is one of those uh, characters where you can interpret him in a personal way. The actual name is Mark Simpson. Uh, he's he's uh, from the UK. Um, he he, ha he also knows anatomy, so he can do some of the, these exaggerations. They're very powerful. Like Batman and the Joker and a lot of the iconic characters, uh, 
you can kind of go crazy with them, which he did here. There's just a lot of yeah, a lot but, of messaging, expressive nature going on. You got the wicked over oversized smile, and are those are those bats that are? That, I was just gonna say, I don't know if you guys can see this, but yeah. from the from the lips on up, those are all bats. Yeah. Yep. As I zoom in here with my iPad, yeah. Yeah. My, wow. Beautifully done. <laughs> And Very you don't powerful. see that. You don't see that in the thumbnail size. You just see the yeah. the, the gray. Mm -hmm. You think it's just hatching. Yep. All the black from the lips up is is yeah. all bats. That's a very powerful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you got con conceptual, uh, along with rendering and graphic and memorable and impact from mm -hmm. a distance. So he's covered. All his grounds here. He's an excellent commercial artist. You know, he yeah. knows how to get your attention. Yeah, um, even yeah. if even if you didn't know what the story is, which obviously you know with just a face, you're gonna know that you're in for a ride. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's gonna make you pick it up right there because yeah. this this is just reaches out and okay, this is scary. Yeah, yeah spooky. I'm gonna have yeah. to pick it up. Yeah, and you can read it a multitude of ways. Mm -hmm. Looks like he, in one looking at it one way, it looks like he's scared. Looking at it yes. another way, it's just maniacally crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And then how the how the bats kind of flow away, it's like he's being pulled back almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it's pulling his face back. I, I see what mm -hmm. you're saying. Because like, that's yeah. what I got it too. That's almost like because they get smaller, it looks like the yeah. face is being pulled right. like away. Or is disintegrating into bats. Yeah. yeah. Right. Or it looks like he could be obsessed with you know Batman because the eyes. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes. And making making another statement about the interconnected nature of them feeding off each other to survive. Mm -hmm. In other words, you know, coexistence. Yeah. You know, strangely enough, the only thing that and I, I mean, I, I think this cover is great. I almost feel like the Batman Detective Comics logo color should be like a yellow or something. I almost feel the bats kind of like it's hard for me to read Batman. I can read. Yeah, Detective. I would have reversed it. I would yeah. have reversed it out. Mm -hmm. uh, white. It's a little color. buried. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, you know, I think most people know Batman. That once you see that, that you don't really need to have it clear. Right. Yeah. That's just my only uh, thing. But no, I'd almost think this cover would actually work better without the logos and information. I mean, yeah. I'd be curious yeah. to see a see uh, a blank one without be, that. It would be more yeah. intense. I yeah. think you almost don't even need it. Or if you did, maybe put like detect. I don't know. It's funny because you see images like this. And you sometimes think, well, yeah, he made room for it, but the logo, but yeah, it's a little busy on top, which I, I think was a point, but yeah, I don't it, even need all the a, information. It's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, artistically, it's brilliant mm -hmm. how he came, you know, what made him think of to turn everything into bats on the top? Yeah. 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 That Very is time awesome. consuming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. What, oh, was yeah. He smoke? what was he smoking? Yeah. Been, now, question. there is something he may have done it by hand, and I'm not going to say he didn't, but he also could have done um, a stamp, a photo <laughs> stamp with multiple oh, okay. bats. Get multiple bats, and you just kind of go through, and you can do stamping, or you can do where the computer will make a bunch from a random. So you can do that digitally. And the, the only, yeah, the only reason I'm saying that he could have gone through and done it by hand, I'm not. Sure. Yeah. Um, but around the eyes, it almost, I would almost say he did a stamp, like a digital stamp, just just kept stamping and stuff to get mm. that effect. On which Procreate, works. you can create uh, brush stamps. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what I'm saying. And he just did it around the eyes. Now, maybe he did do it by hand. I'm not want to like diss the artist if he did. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would do that by stamps just because. The way it is by the eyes, it looks like somebody took the image and just kept stamping it over and over again, so it makes those little white specks. Because mm -hmm. it's hard for me mm -hmm. to think somebody would go in and just systematically draw little white specks. It looks like those white specks around the eyes are more made by just a multitude of black shapes, and then there's, sure. there's like certain bits of white not covered by it. Yeah. If you did this all by hand, you'd probably end up looking like that after. It would a long probably minute. look a little more organized, yeah. maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but still amazing. I mean, yeah. again, in, I think today's age, I don't think it matters how an artist does it as long as no. They, no. the um, result is what they want. Like yeah. I said at the beginning, uh, th we're in the age now where you just throw everything against the wall and see what sticks. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ready? Very good. Very ready? good. 
2012, cool. John Romita. Wow. That is powerful. Um, yeah. We've got, again, two groups against each other. You know, the, the face-off uh, Avengers versus X-Men. Um, again, there's storytelling here. Uh, good, solid rendering. Um, colors. You know, it, it, it's a group shot, so you're going to have that kaleidoscope look, that postage stamp mm -hmm. look where it's all, you know, a, a kind of a train wreck as it goes backwards. But in the foreground, you get enough of the major characters to get mm -hmm. what's going on. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'd have done quite that many people. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or I might have done pack. just the leading characters facing off and you get the same effect. I think um, also with the digital, you're able to put the same amount of detail in the very back characters in the mm -hmm. very front. And I think yeah. sometimes that makes it a little busy. Yeah. It reminds me of a video game versus screen, like a fighting game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that could have been the yeah. point. Yeah. It's like Mortal Kombat. Sure. Sure. Fight. Um, let's see. I would love to see X Men Avengers as like a Mortal Kombat movie. It's one on one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Lasers more. giving us a comment here. Will a more reductive, subtracted art style become more popular, or will we continue to value more and more refinement? That's an excellent question. Ooh, refinement. I think it's going to go to refinement. It's going to be more classic art. I yeah. think um, that's a good point. I think that you're going to see both go be, become uh, prevalent, um, but here's the difference. I think we cannot underestimate the fact that as every aspect of our lives goes more digital and we can create things more digitally, that's going to place a premium value on things done by hand. Mm -hmm. And not that that will devalue so much the digital side, but there's there's a value to things that are handmade that, that always yeah. have been. And so the more human element that's connected to the art, I feel will elevate its value. Um, now, whether that means that, you know, people who work the traditional analog way are going to be looked at differently than people who don't, I don't know. I just think that human nature values the the by hand aspect of things. You know, you see something created just like Aaron just spoke earlier about the stamp versus by hand. Now, whether yeah. we admit it or not, there's a level of admiration that's a little higher if he did, if he it, did all it by hand. hand. Yeah. So. You know, as much as we try to say, well, it's all valid, there is this little bit of prejudice there where, gosh, if he did all that by hand, I'm hugely a fan and admire his effort and so on. So I think that by hand thing is, is going to be yeah. big. Um, the <laughs> eat they cat food. The future holds <laughs> suffering and consumption of cat food. That may, <laughs> that may be true. Let's Aaron, see. is that your cat? <laughs> that's, that's, Sorry, guys. That's Aaron. You got to hold count? the computer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Barb, what do you think about this particular cover? It is very busy. Uh, they have, uh, he mitigated that somewhat by putting the white background mm -hmm. in and mm -hmm. then doing the cutouts up here around the edges. Yeah. Uh, to simplify it. Yeah. And it also, the, the design at the top leads to the two different parties. You know, you've got you've got the, the sharp designs um, in in the writing up there that that points to each side. So, yes, I think that that helps as well. Yeah. Good graphic layout. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it's just it's just so darn busy. Uh, that's my. Yeah, it's very my busy. Yeah. Well, it, it, it works if you it, I'm going to go. In, I, I take it and I'll blow it up in my it works in your hand. You know, yeah. the comic book, but as yeah. a thumbnail, as a, if you're looking for it on Amazon and you see the little two inch oh, yeah. thumbnail, oh, yeah. it, it's you're done. What is that? It's just a you know, and the coloring yeah. doesn't really help here either. But uh, it, it's gorgeous when you when if you've got it in your hand, if you see it on a stand in a, in a comic shop, yeah. But it, uh, as a thumbnail on a screen, it does not work. Uh, yeah, it's just too busy. All mm -hmm. I really see is cap. And uh, Cyclops. Yeah, the rest right. of it's the rest of it's a muddy mess. <laughs> but if but if you but again if you had it in your hand, the actual comic, it would it's great. It's beautiful. It's, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. It works. It just doesn't work as thumbnail size. Rory, what about you? Yeah. Thoughts, observations? Uh, I know it's supposed to have depth going to the back, but I just see it's very flat. And something about the colors that don't pop, like there's too much purple right. or something going on. Too many yeah. colors blur together, so your eyes don't know what to do. So right. it just becomes this purple. Mm -hmm. Maybe if they had played a little bit with the intensity, making the forward figures a little more intense and saturated than the receding figures yeah. that may have helped clarify some yeah. of it. But uh, yeah, I mean, well drawn, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's amazing because I can't do it. So that's, yeah. Well, yeah. that's my bar for good art. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, and, the and anatomy is spot on. It's spot on. Mm -hmm. And it does tell us the story, which I always appreciate. You know, if, if you're going to do a, a single image graphic cover, cool. But if you're going to do multiple images, it's it's always cooler if it tells us a story about what's going on in the book. So this is like Civil War. So, yeah. But we can move on. That's what it reminded me yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, and cool. This is 2015 yeah. Cliff Chang. Okay. Is, I think that's how it, we pronounce his last name. Mm -hmm. so. uh, very simple. Uh -huh. um, complementary colors. A split complementary. Um, mm -hmm. they kept it simple and elegant design and it tells a story. He's shrinking, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I and think it's getting I, bigger. It, or, or getting bigger. Or getting bigger. Yeah. Or getting yeah. Bigger. yeah I, like... I find it I find it interesting that can you see my pointer on here? Yeah. Yes. yes. I yes, find can. it interesting that, that Marvel's over here in this corner and the title is here and there's this is unusual for me. To see yeah, nothing yeah. up here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little different. It's more grabbing though, because yeah. you're oh, so and, used and to they, that Yeah, and they, they put this the barcode down here in this corner. It's, so this it almost makes you think it was a mistake because you expect the barcode in the marble to be on the left hand side. That's mm -hmm. right. Uh, so and then you think, well, you know, they were wiser than we thought, those sly foxes. They put it over there just to make us look at it longer. Which uh, it does make you kind of go, what's going on here? Was this a was this a mistake, or did they intend this? I like the placement of the Ant Man um, title. I like that logo type. It's I think it's primarily they wanted the larger figure in the background, that helmet, to be quite visible above the Ant Man logo, and it works. It's really cool. Yeah, you've uh, got some negative space going on there. Mm hmm. And the uh, color holds. Color holds, good saturation on the main figure. Uh, Aaron, thoughts, observations? I like it. Again, I, I know this sounds strange, but I almost think what's confusing that he, whether he's shrinking or growing is the figure where he's got his arms outstretched. Oh. Because it looks like he's looking up. <laughs> and it should be almost kind of like he should be a little more hunched over, maybe. The guy, like, he's looking down, he's looking down, and then that one pose, he's looking up. So you're like, was well, he supposed to go down or up? Does, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, if, if he's yeah, shrinking, he I should think... put the helmet on and be looking down the whole way. Doon, 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 doon. Instead of looking but down, looking the, up. I think that's the point here is that maybe he's not, not supposed to know. Yeah, yeah I, I think, think the ambiguity, I think the, the ambiguity yeah. is intentional here. Uh, Sweet Laser says, love this classic cartooning. Let's yeah, see Mike Howard. Design yeah. Sing. Reminds me of Toth or someone like Mike Howard. Yeah, it absolutely does. Yeah, good point, right? good point. Good point. Um, yeah. The graphic I like it overall. I mean, I, I like it. Again, yeah. I almost, I, I have to agree that Ant-Man logo where Barbara, Barbara said that, that is, it almost is a little distracting. I'd be curious to see it without the logo. What's interesting uh, also to me is that it, it steps away from the stereotypical DC Marvel cover uh, that we see nowadays yeah. and goes back to a much more simplistic style. Yeah. yeah. That's a good way to stand out. Something like Sikivich. Sik 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 I can think Sik 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 would do something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Very pop like art, graphic art. Yeah. Rory, yeah. before yeah. we before we move on, anything? To yeah, the, so he's in the very bottom when he's the smallest. He's running at you, so I would I would think you'd expect him to get bigger as he comes toward you. <clears throat> the outline coloration, the blue, uh -huh. is in relation to that like 
sunset Florida background scene. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just it's like Ant Man goes to Miami, <laughs> and, and that that silhouette that just reminds me of like uh the old, like the like Johnny Quest cartoons or something where you just go yeah, to the silhouette really of somebody. Yeah, sure. So yeah. then that just takes you back even more. So you could tell I me mean, obviously this is a more modern one, it's 2015, but it makes you feel like you're you're back in the day. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Sort of, it is sort of. Retro sixties, I'm feeling it's that not nostalgic. Yeah, yeah. Nostalgic. retro, yeah, retro, yeah. retro, mm-hmm. nostalgic. Yeah, like it. Good right. one. This next one is probably my favorite of this batch. Okay. Oh, Ooh, so spooky. cool. You know, it's 2017 funny. I just, Wando. I just saw this like on kick on Facebook. Did you guys post this on Facebook? No. No, so I didn't. Weird. I've never seen this cover before, but I, saw, I mean, until I saw it on Facebook, and now I see it again. There we go. This is um, spooky. As synchronicity. Well. It's very, it's emotionally powerful, spooky. There's a looming, you know, sense of dread or doom. Monochromatic. Uh, it's very powerfully done. The lighting is subdued intentionally. I mean, it, it just tells, you know, uh, to quote Ray Bradbury, it just uh, says something wicked this way comes. Very <laughs> you much know, so. Strangely enough, I think it would have been cooler to see some of the tentacles in the foreground, like coming up and like having one of them in the corner, like bending down, or you know, like the yeah. more foreground, like grabbing yeah. you, and you. Yeah, yeah, like it's yeah, coming yeah. at you. And also, I the figure. I mean, I like I like the image, but the figure and the tentacles seem like two separate things a little bit. Like maybe yeah. having one of the tentacles kind of like come around this cape to show that he's made of it, because I can't figure yeah. out like. Is it a Does cape he or have is it tentacles, a or is he being lifted up by tentacles? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Took a quick, yeah. To me, that figure looks like it's the bow of like a Viking longboat. Yeah, like, yeah. That's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. And like I, you know, that's a good point because it's like, is it is that a cape or maybe that is a boat? It's a boat. It's, it's a, a boat. boat. It's a dark arc. Because it's called dark arc. Oh, dark, now. oh, that's a dark art. Okay. Oh, yeah, right. I, thought so, it, I thought it was yeah. a goat man in a big cloak. No. A that gra- could be too. That's yeah. what I thought. <laughs> a, a, a graphic thing. observation here. We lose a little bit of the word dark. I would have done a white stroke around those mm-hmm. letters yeah. just so you could, it would still remain dark, <clears throat> but it's just harder to read. Now, again, I'm seeing a thumbnail rather than a full size, but sometimes That's that helps. Boat? It's a boat. That's a guy in a cloak. I know. Yeah, and, that, and, cool a big, how that works. and a big cape. Yeah. See, I'm seeing. The, if yeah, it is a boat, I, I'm sorry. I mean, long boat, you know. Yeah. I know it's what like, he's saying now, but I don't know. I mean, if it is a boat, um, it looks like well, it could be a person water, because, dude, and it's yeah. called Dark Ark, and there's water. Yeah. So I'm kind of thinking. I'm yeah, leaning but I mean, Ark boat. doesn't necessarily mean boat. It mean Ark of the Covenant. Sure, sure. Noah's Ark was a boat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's true. Well, there's so much detail know. in that face. I mean, you, your yeah. mind makes you want to say, "Oh, that's the character." Yeah, 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 yeah. Because if it was really like the, you know the figurehead on a ship, I wouldn't see have that a much little detail. bit now of the lines on the side looking mm-hmm. at the boat. Maybe it's just you thought. Yeah, I you thought know, it if was we a- had a if we had a central spine for the prow, you know, yeah, mm-hmm. literally went under that face, <laughs> went all the way to the water, and you had that little V shaped divot of water spray. Yeah, you would you would read it more as as boat. But again, sometimes artists intend ambiguity to make it more interesting and more difficult like mc escher did you know that was his mm-hmm. thing was did what you know do you really did a lot at? of his stuff in wood carvings yeah that amazing yeah i watched a video of that where he would do a lot of a carve out of wood like the snake one he'd stamp it this huge i was <laughs> yeah. like that's wow. crazy i yeah. thought he drew that like no a lot of it was wood and stuff. yeah, yeah. Wood. i was like I think what he could impressive. do with if he'd had photoshop yeah, oh, oh, think good what God. blow yeah. our minds. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just crazy <laughs> stuff. Yeah, uh, good one, good one, Barb. All right, before we get to uh, our favorite in-house artist, we have one last one from 2021. This is Dennis Cowan. Oh wow, I love his stuff. That is powerful. Uh, yeah, the I radiating lines coming mm-hmm. out from the central. Yeah. This is all movement. It's all and movement. And knife something. You know, strangely enough, I, I like it. The way he's like pulling the cords. Yeah. Shouldn't his hand be going the other way to like pull it? I mean, maybe. Do you see what I'm saying? Like if you pull this way, you usually want to push instead of pull. 
Right, but that's right, a minor right. thing other than that. Because I for a minute there, I'm like, is he, yeah. you know? But it I mean, takes that's, you a minute. Yeah, it almost looks like he's because instead of like, because you would think like, is he trying to get the cords out of his way or is he pulling the cords in front of him? Looks like he's pulling to cut him. Look what's in his. Yeah. Oh, uh, that makes sense. See, then that might have actually made more sense if the if the blade was just underneath the cord, like he's about. Right, to cut. right, right. Okay. So it takes a little bit to figure out what's going on. But what what yeah. got me just first looking at it was how powerful it is and all these cords are literally you got that radial focus to the center yeah. mm-hmm. really strong i would have liked to see him lit a little bit more because mm-hmm. it looks yeah. like the lighting is kind of flat you know and that's not necessarily his deal but i really would have loved to have seen that character lit maybe mm-hmm. one of the cords was sparking or something that would have been uh, cool. that would have been cool yeah. yeah yeah barb observations comments um, I like the subdued colors, and then you get these splashes of red that makes yeah. it pop. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, also the red uh, highlights his face, which is a very dramatic face. Oh yeah. And uh, and like you said, it's all radial, where it's all coming into the center, and mm. the center is act is his face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You keep going back yeah. to it, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's almost yep, so it's, powerful that even like Aaron missed that he was holding a scythe, you know. It uh, took me a minute to figure that out, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rory, observations, commentary? I, for me, I feel like there's a lot going on, which mm-hmm. is almost yeah. was inundated with detail. So you have to slow down and look at it all. Uh, the yes. red for me doesn't pop as much. I mean, I see it there. And I see two different shades, like the ones in the cannons and the ones on his forearms and face. But right. it, for me, it doesn't doesn't pop. I just see more of that, like gunmetal brass color. Right. right. So strangely enough, talking about logos again, do you guys think this logo should be bigger than just a little sentence on the top? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, because I don't even know what the title of the book is. It's so, Hardware you know, Season it, 1. Okay. But oh, you're right, good. it is really tiny. It's yeah. just too tiny. Yeah. I don't know if that's something new they did, or could you think like, because it looks like he left space for a logo. This is the actual one cover. It looks like he actually left space for the logo on top, and they didn't put it there. I'm yeah, thinking it's, it's a variant. <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe that's variant. what it is. We've got yeah, this, a little DC logo here, and then the Milestone logo over here. Right. Right. But, but you yeah. think they'd have hardware just huge right there. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Did anybody read this overall. one? Do what? No, I Has anybody read, read this one? No, I haven't. No. I haven't read superhero comics in the, since the mid nineties, right, maybe we, late nineties. Gone through our covers, but we do have a couple of pages from our own Rob Davis that I really like. <laughs> yes, these are, these are actually spot illustrations. I love and these. Is there for, anybody yeah. on the Those face of the earth who books. doesn't know who this is? <laughs> exactly. He's got, he's got elf ears, right? <laughs> it's exactly Sherlock Holmes. That's um, Tolkien writing Lord of the Rings, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, there's that that's too, yeah. <laughs> talk to us a little, Rob, about like what was this for so we can have a little context and then what references you used and your favorite Sherlock Holmes. I'd love to hear all this. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll work backwards a, a okay. little bit. I'll start with that's that's actually uh, based on uh, Jeremy Brett as mm-hmm. Sherlock Holmes. He's okay. my favorite Sherlock Holmes. Good choice. Uh, it, this is for uh, Airship Twenty Seven, the the company that I uh, that I'm partnered with, uh, Ron Fortier, and we publish uh, new pulp books. One of our most popular books it, it, it is uh, Sherlock Holmes. It, we, we have writers that are telling new stories that are just like uh, Arthur Conan Doyle would tell them. There's no monsters, no Martians, no weird stuff. It's uh, it's straight ahead storytelling that's told by uh, Watson. And oh, Sherlock so, Holmes. And, and is, is that the, public uh, domain? Yeah. Yes. yes, it is. Anything okay, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. Future, until recently, uh, everything mm-hmm. up till 1923, because uh-huh. uh, 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 Doyle was still writing uh, Holmes up into the 20s. Okay. And some of those stories are still in public domain, not, but I think they're supposed to, to drop out next year or the year after. Mm-hmm. So everything will be public domain at that point. So, yeah, so we've been 
we've been doing news stories because it is public domain. But that, that I, I've done all the uh, interior illustrations for all these, and this was for a special issue that we did. Uh, it was the twelfth issue, twelfth volume of of the series, and I did them all in this in this uh, uh, this shaded pencil style. Before that, I did them in pen and ink, uh, but for this one, I, I I found a lot of photo reference. I used Photoshop a lot, my uh, my light table, and then I would go in and and shade and and, uh, and and do the little detail work. So uh, those are those are based off photographs. Mm. Yeah. Very I like, detailed. I, I like it. And, uh, did you ever play with? Because I just got to ask. Did you ever play with the smoke coming out of his pipe? Because of the negative space. Yes. There? I yes. kind of thought because I was going to say that there could be smoke, but I bet your money since it's negative space, you tried that multiple times and it didn't work. Yeah, I just couldn't get it to feel right with the rest of the yeah. image, so I I, yeah. it, I never could get it to work right. So I just erased it out and uh, yeah. left it as it is. Yeah, I think it's I think it's it's fine. Yeah, no, I like I like your composition uh, a lot, uh, Rob. That because your eye on that page just moves exactly where it should. You know, you know. Strangely strong. enough, did you ever think because you have the silhouette there? And I don't know, maybe there's more to it. Did you ever think about doing the, the silhouette instead of such a stark black, like uh, cross hatching in pencil, like cross hatch yes. her whole thing? I did it originally in cross hatch pencil. That's what I kind of thought. It, did, it did not stand out. I didn't stand out. Okay, so I, yeah. So I inked it, and then it then it popped. Popped. Okay. That's what I was wondering. If point. it just the shape mm -hmm. just got lost. Okay. Yeah, that makes more yeah, sense. Yeah, it got it got lost in the cross hatching. And I could have drawn in with a lot of detail as well. I think originally what I had was I had I had a picture of him facing facing me. And so when mm -hmm. I when I did the reference, I I turned you know I, I did it. I was going to do him as a dark shape, but using the same outline. And it just and I, I the, the cross hatching just didn't work. So I tried inking it, and man, it just that did it. It popped. Yeah. 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 It, it's the funny thing is, is like it seems a little jarring, but it does pop. So I mean, yeah. it's, it's Sometimes in art, you take what you can get, and your eye <laughs> yeah. is drawn that way. Your eye is yeah. drawn to it, it straight well, to and, it. Yeah, and it brings you right down to what they're looking at. They're looking, they're yeah. looking down on something. So uh, I think if I remember right, it's a, it's either it's a dead body that they're looking at. If I remember uh -huh. right, I can't remember exactly what's going on there, but I I believe they're examining a dead body now. Uh, another question uh, contextually here. I know that you didn't use the deerstalker cap, and I know why, <laughs> but were you told that you're not going there, or did you yourself go, I'm not going there? That, that's me, I, and I, I have done it occasionally uh -huh. where it's appropriate, where they're yeah. safe. The only time that deerstalker is actually appropriate is if they're out in the countryside. Uh -oh. Yeah, outside. Yeah, I was going to so say because yeah. uh, if they're in the city, they're going to wear either a, a bowler, a bowler. Hamburg, or or a, you know a stovepipe, yeah. sure, a, a sure, top hat. Uh, they're not going. He's not going to wear uh, the deer stalker in town. Kudos to you for continuity. Thank you. That's very. Thank nice. you for having the forethought. <laughs> I'd also love to see an illustration. You may have done one already like this, where you show Holmes actually playing the violin. I think that would yes. be very cool. Uh -huh. I have I have one that I, I probably should have included in this where he's in front of the window in their study, and he's oh, a silhouette awesome. Awesome. against yeah. their window. Which is, and and in that one the smoke does curl up from his from his pipe. Oh, very, <laughs> very cool. But yeah, right. this this is, this is these are fun. These are a lot of fun. Yeah, really yeah. nice work. Really Thank nice. you. Um, so now that we've gone through the two thousands, we're up to date. And it's time to start talking about where do we go artistically from here. Um, I've thought about this for a while and I thought, you know, at this point, because of the Internet, because of digital art, because of the prevalence of so many international artists able to communicate their imagery across the marketplace from anywhere, from Tibet, if they want to, um, I think we're going to see a renaissance of sorts of storytelling art. Um, I, I don't think there will be a prevailing art style anymore. And I think I that's think you're a right. good thing. Yeah. 
I really do. Um, I think those of right us who, who are influenced by prevailing style and, and learned from that, that, that's great. And we all have our favorite elements of our styles. But I can't wait to see what this new generation is going to do and the generations following with <clears throat> the opportunities here to tell stories never before seen. You know, I mean, uh, of all of us here, you know, uh, Aaron's got what could arguably be called the most unorthodox style. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, compared internationally to all the styles out there, any style, any style, as long as the story is told well, yeah. is valid and accepted. And, and here's the, the key to that. People have said to me, some in this room, some off camera have said to me, uh, uh, you know, it's just, I don't know, what's the point? You know, it's like, uh, I'll never be able to compete with this or that or have that much sales or these numbers or whatever. And my response is usually somewhere like, you know what, you'll always have a market with consistently good work. You're going to always have a market that supports you, whether it supports you on the level of, you know, Elon Musk or whether it supports you on the level of paying your bills so you can keep doing it every day. Yeah. You got to ask yourself, does that really matter or does it matter that you're able to do the work for a living? You know, and we're in the best position, I think, that in history to create work and build a marketplace that supports us. What do you guys think? Barb, I'll let you go first on this. What do All you right. Think? Well, I lost my mouse. I had to find it again. No! <laughs> Glad you found it. Yeah, see, Before the cat got it. Yeah. Before the cat, yeah. I love how you're holding it like a mouse. Too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I like the fact that we have become such a small world that uh, we can we can mix cultures and cultural influences mm -hmm. yeah. and um, stylistically anything goes. Yeah. You know, throw it all into the melting pot and see what comes out. Right. Um, and as you said, as long as it's a good story, that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Wide open field. Rob, thoughts, observations? I, what I think is going to be uh, a game changer is, is the, the new thing they're doing with AI. Okay. Where somebody oh, can describe, yeah. yeah, where you can describe, where anybody can describe what they want and okay. feed it into an, uh, uh, into yeah, an AI right and it'll pop out some a wild beautiful stuff. piece of work mm -hmm. uh, that, that I think that's going to be a game changer. Yeah, we are or, literally but, in the wild, yeah. wild west of comics yeah, and animation. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's. I think that's going to be. That's going to be. Who knows where that's going to take us? Is it? Is so? Is it going to be important? Right now, we're already at the point where there are a lot of co comic creators who don't even use a piece of paper anymore. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm one. Of, I'm one of the dinosaurs still doing it on paper. Yeah. I've uh, just recently and, and given I, up. Even I'm starting to do a, a little bit on, mm -hmm. on in in the digital world. So I, I've just recently given up working on on regular paper, and it's not because I don't like it. It's because I have to because I have a, sl a slight tremor in my hand. Working mm -hmm. digitally, I can set my smoothing control, and it, and it eliminates that. That so may for me, keep it was me a drawing later. That may keep mm -hmm. me drawing later as well. I don't have that problem yet, but you know, I've already got occasional aches and pains in this in my drawing hand that mm -hmm. I wear this glove for. Mine's but, called uh, an essential trimmer. And it's very minute, but it is, it's enough that I can tell in my yeah. original artwork that it's there. Mm -hmm. So I've switched to digital. And in some ways, it's very sorrowful for me because, um, like mm -hmm. you said, there's an emphasis on original art. Uh, but in other ways, I'm very happy because 10 years ago, 20 years ago, that would have been the end of my career. Now I've extended yeah. my Boom. career for another Even. decade or so. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that as we go along, that that will help even more and more. Uh, yeah. And it, 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 like I was talking about that's with the AI stuff. If once we get artists to accept that, and then they learn how to use it as another tool, that, that could just do some mind blowing stuff. I think. You wouldn't have to pay uh, your stars so, anymore. You could just make them up. <laughs> exactly right. You exactly want a young right. Robert Downey so, Jr.? Bing. Yeah, bing. There he is. Don't have to reference yep. it. Aaron, so, thoughts, <clears throat> observations Talk about the future of art? Yeah, like the future. Do you see it 
like kind of as as I was laying it out earlier? What what differences? If I think I would I would like to. I've always been more interested in more unique styles and stuff. Yeah. I, I tend to find more of those unique styles at the public library. Uh, that's why I find a lot of the books that do a lot of weird stuff. Uh, comic book stores, not as much, which I mean makes sense. Comic book stores are going to put the stuff out there that's going to sell. The libraries there to lend you information. Um, so, in that, I do think comics have become more of a niche market. I never thought I would say that, but I think comics has been more of a niche market than it's ever been in its history now. And I think it literally is going down the trend of like books and print. Um, you know, I don't like to read digitally, but I yeah, on uh, online because sometimes it bothers my eyes. Um, but I do think digital comics have taken away the one thing that made comics, like gave the comics a hook, is that's the collectability. I think now pirating comics or whatever, like, you know, when we were growing up, you know, we had to go find the issue. You, you, you couldn't just get it. Now you have pirated sites that just, they just read them or they don't have to go search it. Sure. And I think the collectability has, has hurt comics. I think that's why they're moving more towards graphic novels. Like they're trying to join mm -hmm. the book market mm -hmm. more than the periodical yeah. market because the magazine market is that's what's I mean, selling. All but did. That's what's selling. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's selling. The, the, You've got to make the, them in the books because the collectability of the periodicals is just not there anymore. Right. Yep. Now, the having said, is, uh, some people call them pamphlets. So, yeah. Right. But having said all of that, I think that gives you more reason to try new art styles and go because what have you got to lose? Yeah. Right. It's not yeah. like you're making comics that are selling thousands of millions. Um, I do. I'm not a big fan of people who go the lowest common denominator sometimes as comics to do kickstarters or whatever um i do think the internet has brought out a little more of the i don't want to say pulp but a little more of the sleaze in comics that i kind of always knew was there i mean it was always sold in the back of the store or whatever sure but kickstarter has definitely brought out that you know nudity yeah. sells and i think it's like not even the art form and now it just overshadows everything i mean this is one of my like i'd like to do a kickstarter but i don't have tons of high hopes for it because my comic doesn't have all that stuff. I mean, it just, the difference between non-nude books and nude books, is just, the numbers are just astronomical. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think wow. the internet has brought that out a little more, but because of, again, because of that, there's no reason not to do crazy weird stuff, especially with this so easy doing digital and so easy doing this stuff. You don't have to do paper. You can do anything on the computer. So go for it. I mean, I would love to see somebody mix photographs with art. Um, I actually did that a little bit in Godlands. The star is in the back of my book. Jack Kirby Hubble did Telescope. that in the sixties. <laughs> yeah. I used <laughs> Hubble Telescope he did collages. Mm -hmm. And yeah. now you can do it. Now you can do it in Photoshop. I, yeah. In yeah. fact, I, I do it in, in some of my work is I'll, I'll take yeah. something and, and, Zap the contrast way sh so that right. it's very stark, so mm -hmm. it's very ink inky looking. So uh, yeah, but the one thing yeah, I think can, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I, I think the no, one no, thing no. that will keep comics around for for a long time as an art form is just when somebody has an idea that's a visual idea. Comic books are the easiest go to medium. It, you know, it doesn't cost much to make a comic except time. Movies are expensive. You know, if you want to make a movie, that takes a lot of effort and time. Oh, yeah. You want, you know, write a book. Yeah. So if you want to add visuals to your storytelling, comics still are the easiest entry point in there. But strange enough, because of that, and I don't know, I've never understood why people always see movies as the end game of a property. I mean, maybe, do you know what I'm saying? Like, the money. It's, it's the money, I guess. It's That's also, where the money is. That's where the yeah. money is. Yeah, and so like if if it's you know, but it's funny because if people like you know, I'll use the Hellboy movies. You know, I, I, the Hellboy movies are okay, but you know, a lot of people would like you know, well, they kind of ruined it, or they ruined the X Men, they, they or they ruined the other properties. Almost like if the movie they make based on a property sucks or they don't like it, it like erases the property. I I, <laughs> I never got that. It's like it's a movie, just ignore it. Uh, um, in terms of, I would say. A lot of us have fallen into that idea, or we did when we were younger, that I think you so. Know, 
the ultimate payoff was your you've really made it if it, if your property has been made right. into it sure and and that and, and that's i'm not going to be um a hypocrite enough to say no. that if not hollywood came knocking at my door i wouldn't oh sure i wouldn't put divinity on the market i would i'll take the money the and run all the way to the bank you the bet the difference is I, I don't i don't think you measure the value to you of your property based on whether hollywood likes it or not yeah. um, because really the value is going to be whatever you place the value on is it sales numbers is it the story itself if right. it's something personal which i know it is to you there the value is in that and it's very um there's an old saying that comparison is the enemy of joy uh, yeah. mm -hmm. it's very true uh but you know i mean obviously we we want to make money but it's it's a matter of how much money do you need to keep the story going as an artist that's always been you know my measure right. is how much money do i need to make to do this for a living you know i don't need you know two houses and three cars and a boat and a house in the hamptons or whatever some people want to do that great that's good for them whatever but point being that it's a dangerous road to measure your success only by numbers Oh uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You go to I measure my yeah. success in the fans' reaction. That's awesome. I love that too. That's not my yeah. entire measure, but I love seeing <laughs> that. I have come back to a con to make sure that I delivered a piece that was requested just recently at the uh, at the con in Daytona. Um, I had moved on. We were still in in Deland, and I got a text that a fan was very disappointed. And he'd driven up from far away to meet me in person and get me to sign the work. And was I still in town? I was like, yeah, I'm still here. I'll be there in a second. And it was worth it to me. It was a selfish thing, too, because it was worth it to me just to see the look on the guy's face when I signed the work. Yeah, you know? yeah that's, cool. Th that's yeah. the most, th I think, probably the best thing I got out of my work so far is one of my mm -hmm. kids' books was sold to... Um, somebody online and his kid liked my character so much that the, the little boy dressed as my character for Halloween. Wow. Like, see, <laughs> oh, that, awesome. that, that to me, does that, yeah, that yeah you, you've made it at, at such a young that age. I mean, I was like, wow, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. One, one of my most recent really good feeling type incidences was I sold a, a Divinity number one to somebody at a show it was an all day show and they ended up over lunchtime going out and sitting in the, in the lobby and they read number one and they came back and said, I have to get the oh, next wow. one because the oh, first, number bad. one was so good. I got to find out what happens next. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Very good. Yes. You got him. <laughs> yep. That's, a, that's what I want to hear. Got him. Got him. Yeah. But I what, do think uh, experimentation is, I mean, even my goblin is all done in pencil. There's no ink mm -hmm. in that. Yeah. So I think yeah. there's a lot. I mean, even, and I that wouldn't be possible without digital. I think experimentation is rife right now. Um, even though I, I think if you go in the again, it's like comics would break your heart, like Hollywood would break your heart, right? Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> going going it for you. But I do think see comics as ripe with innovation and experimentation, and I think you could almost converge it a little bit on fine arts if you wanted to a mm -hmm. little. Um, which has been discussed in many books or whatever about mixing fine arts with comics. Um, but I do feel that, you know, just have fun. I mean, I, I think, yeah, if you're going into this, you're not going to sell a lot. It, strangely enough, now, why does manga sell so much? I, I, I know there's a lot of there, but I think it's also the anime. And I would be curious if you took the anime out, would manga sell as much? It may. I have no idea. That's a really hmm. good question. Yeah. yeah. Like hey, it, it, a subject for a future show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's gonna, Everything is content. In that one, Aaron's going to do all the research. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do all the research. I, yeah, I all did right, all the research for all these cover ones. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'd love to do that discussion. What? Why does anime continue to sell so strongly? I, I think a lot of it is consistency and volume of the work there's so much of it yeah. out there and it's it does appeal to a soap opera mentality and to its it niche markets and its genre and a lot of it's just really good and a lot of it isn't mm -hmm. but 
we have that over here too, you know? It so, really... But of course, the universal question of all of that is why does anime translate in the manga sales and superhero movies don't translate in the comic book sales? That's <laughs> another good question. That's, That's a great the universal question. question. Why? You're, you're going to yeah. lead the talk that night. That's why. Well, I, I literally think it's just the art style. That, that, you know, when you see the anime, it's much verbatim the manga. And a lot of the anime doesn't finish. So they'll get to the end of the anime and be like, I want to know what happens next. You got to read the manga to finish the story. I don't know if that's done on purpose or not caught up, but it's almost like the anime is kind of like, watch this, and like, well, it doesn't end with it. Got to read the book. Um, and the, yeah, and the Marvel a, movies. That's a, that's a good point. There is no tie in with the comics in the movie. No. Really? No. Yeah. But the really manga isn't. is almost, a lot of the anime is verbatim the manga and vice versa. Really? So, I mean, okay. people would do that. And when you show anime on public television, like Toonami, you got kids watching after, the, and then they see the comic on the stand. That's Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, I know that. I know that. Mm -hmm. You know, but you see Captain America. And, and also, uh, there's been many people. Manga, I think the one thing that they've really done well, and I've had another gentleman online talk about this, is they made the entry so easy. In other words, when you go into a manga, it says volume one, two, three, four, yep. five. Yep. It doesn't yep. say Captain America, Civil War, Captain America, Long Journey Home, Captain America. Yep. Like, you don't know where to start. American yep. comics have made it completely convoluted and confusing. And, and you know, yep. manga's like, no, it's like one, two, three. Kids get that. Ad People get you that. You know what else? Sure. Adaptations, Aaron, in terms of when it goes from comics to movies, yeah. it's, it's the craziest thing. We've said it here before many times. All of a sudden, all the Hollywood people are experts on comic books. They I know. Isn't that <laughs> hilarious? And they know how to best adapt it. Even though these people have been doing comics their whole life, oh, and yeah. they, they know the character inside out. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. We, we know how to make this into a successful movie. And that always amazes me. It's like, really? You're an expert on comics? Okay. I will sure. give props to Tom Hanks on this because I remember he did The Road to Perdition. <laughs> Which yeah. is based on my comic. They asked him if he read the comic. It's like, no, I never got in the comic. I don't read that. Yeah, he was just, just he was by just a honest. friend of mine. He was straight just up. Honest. Straight yeah. up. He's fine. like, I did it for the money. I was like, okay, I can respect that. Like, yeah. like it's just not his thing. But he did the movie anyways. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so. Or are you going to say, Barbie, you're going to say something? I said, that was written by a friend of mine from Muscatine, Iowa. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. Um, well, we'll save that conversation, Aaron. I'd love to have that. At some point. It's, it's an interesting conversation because uh, I, I've watched videos and stuff on it, and there seems to be some sort of secret sauce manga has that Americans haven't figured out. Or I don't know something. Uh, you know, it uh, may have something. Now, this is I'm throwing this out there. Uh, loyalty and fealty to the original material mm -hmm. may have something to do with it, because I know that, and, and we all we all really love it when we read a character. And it's conceived on the screen as close to yeah. the written consistency as possible. And there's something mm -hmm. I think that's part of the answer with manga. I don't yeah. think they have the same arrogance of movie production over there. They just look no. at it and go, "Hey, it was successful on paper like this, so let's just put that paper on the screen." The Japanese are very much verbatim. What you, what you, the, even in the live action movies, even the live action movies, they they stick as close to the source material as possible. Americans like to change things because we want to <laughs> innovate. Yeah. Um, well, it's also great. We wanna, yeah. Yeah. Well, we want to calculate the producer mm -hmm. can calculate like. Well, now that's not going to really translate into a movie that well. Really? Uh, yeah. Well, like, why not? You know, yeah. um, which is why well, I'm really looking forward to how Spawn is going to possibly yes. translate into a live action movie. Because to me, something like Spawn, you almost have to do that in animation to make it. Yeah. Well, work. it wouldn't have worked 10 or 15, 20 years ago, but now in this age of CGI, almost anything yeah. works. Yeah. Yeah. Could, yeah. I think it could work now. I yeah, that old Spawn work. movie definitely needs uh, some touching up. <laughs> yeah. 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 It needs a but I think, I think the difference is, is Hollywood over uh, where, wherever the anime is produced. Uh -huh. Because you've got this whole mentality in, in Hollywood of the guy, the, the guy, either the guy with the money or the director or somebody has mm -hmm. to come in and stick his finger in it and say, <laughs> I think yeah. I made it great. Right. Yeah. 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 It's a it's, game it's, of it's, egos. I, yeah. 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 And I've heard it's, that directors, I think it was Roland talked about like some directors 
almost will change things because if they don't, they don't get credit or something. There's like mm. something to do with that. So that's almost so like a priority. They might do something. Something. It's, it's money yeah. and ego. Yep. Yeah. That's yep. what it comes yeah. down to. But where, whereas if, if, if uh, the Japanese apparently have this idea, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> yeah. Whereas yeah. here, it's just the other, it's just the opposite. It's yeah. broke. Let's fix it. You know, it's not a movie. <laughs> That's not a, it's not a movie, so let's make it a movie. Yeah, we'll right. we'll yeah. fix we'll fix it so that it it works as that a it movie. works. It's well, storytelling, that, folks. It's storytelling. Tell that, you know, the freaking story. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know, uh, you're right. Uh, that, that it's already storytelling. It's just literally almost storyboarding on paper. So why can't yeah. you yeah. do it verbatim? Yeah, yeah, it's already done. It's already done. Yeah. yeah. All the, all the actually, hard work is done. Yeah, They actually proved that with Sin City, the original Sin City. Mm-hmm. They yeah. verbatim copied it, and it worked. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. Well, look at, yeah, look at it Sandman. Because it worked the first time. Look at I, Network's, Netflix's Sandman. Okay. Another almost, you know, panel by panel, grabbed yeah. and put on the screen. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, very, very uh, minor changes, and most of that's because we're, the book was made in the 80s or 90s, and now we're actually seeing in the 2020s. So there's got to be some changes made uh, to uh, to talk to that. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Sandman is just incredible. Uh, I haven't I'm, seen it yet. It, oh, I've seen I'm yeah. halfway through it. It is awesome. Really? Okay. I've only seen about three or four episodes. I'm loving so far. it. Uh, I'm, I'm treating it like sipping whiskey. <laughs> one little sip at a time, <laughs> you know. I don't sip. binge. I right. I sip right. the whiskey. I do man. that too. I don't binge. I rarely. Mm. I just watch. Yeah, it makes I, me feel yeah, like I get a series. That's why people tell me about new TV series or whatever. I'm like, have you seen it yet? I'm like, I'm like two years behind, dude. Yeah, it took me years <laughs> to watch X Files after it finally came out. So, <laughs> well, speaking of binging, if any of you guys uh, enjoyed the Karate Kid movies as a kid, um, the Cobra Kai series that they're doing was really fun and season five highly recommend it um it, i got it, the season three and i never finished watching it four and I, five, I, five really takes a lot of material from karate kid three hmm. and brings everything together and dudes the showdown is awesome i really <laughs> enjoyed it. it was one of those guilty pleasure of like it's from my childhood and i love this movie and oh my gosh they brought everybody yeah. back you know that yeah, I've been meaning to watch it. Uh, I have some of the family members that like it. And uh-huh. uh, so I might jump in. The, I'd have to start over again. It's been a while. I like I finished season three like a year or two ago. So, but I don't mind rewatching it. It was a fun I haven't been watching you, it myself, but you yeah. pick it up. You pick it up really, really fast. Yeah. yeah. Um, before we go again, uh, our thoughts go out to our Florida peeps. Hang in there, you guys. Yeah. Be good. Yeah. Stay safe. Yep. Um, and you know, as we always like to close our show, we always like to say, Make my super line. Make mine silver line. Hi, my name is Sergio Cariello, and make mine silver line.